today we will be taking a look at how to use Oracle integration to power Fusion AI agents. Um, a quick intro on what Fusion AI Agent Studio is. Um, what the agents do is they leverage a large language model to reason, make an action plan. Um, in some cases, if you turn it on, interact with human employees for approvals, um, to gather the information and then take a direction and basically make a tool call. Um, the Agent Studio provides a design time environment that provides a set of tools to create and customize um, you know, all of these agents. Uh, this is built natively into Fusion Cloud applications. So when you go into you know, your SaaS environments, if you have the correct roles, you will see under the tools that um, you have the Agent Studio option there. Um, and then also, because this is natively built into Fusion Cloud, um, this provides secure access to the Fusion knowledge stores um, and the APIs internally. So when you create an agent, it leverages a large language model, right? So an LLM to talk to whoever is interacting with the agent uh, to understand the question um, and then take direction on which tool to call based on the question asked. Um, and that's why there are a set of tools that are provided when you create an agent, right? And some of these tools are, uh, you know, the business object tool, which provides access to the Fusion uh, knowledge stores, right? All the underlying business objects within the Fusion applications, you can access those. Um, and again, since this is native to the Fusion cloud, you're not making a call outside. Um, there's a document tool in this case, in this example, we'll take a look at that as well. but. You can upload a document and then the agent can then scan through the document, get you an answer uh, based on the question asked. Um, some other tools are, you know, user profile, calculator, email, um, deep link tools. Um, and then the one we're interested in here is the external REST, which allows an agent to make a call, make a REST API call out to any system um, to get some information or post information, do some action. Um, but the issue comes here when you're trying to access you know, databases or data stores which are private. Uh, let them be in another cloud or they're on-prem, um, and then these agents cannot access those APIs directly, right, because they're private, not available on the public internet. Um, and in those cases, uh, Integration Cloud can shine, right? So in this demo, that's what we're going to take a look at, uh, where there, let's resort, just assuming that there's a database that's on-prem or private in another cloud. Um, and as a part of the interactions with the agent, uh, it requires to look up some details in the database. Um, in this case, particular example, uh, the agent is a benefits agent that has access to you know, things like the documents, uh, the you know, enrollments, uh, business object. Um, and then also when you know, in cases where um, you're enrolled with some provider uh, and you make claims as an employee, uh, their claims are stored inside their systems and their databases. Um, and a user or an employee here inside of Fusion is trying to ask for the list of claims that were made in this year. Um, and, when, and when the agent gets that question, it's going to invoke an integration call and the integrations is then going to you know, go and look up the claims database and return a list of claims uh, that were made for this year for that user. Um, with integrations, you can unlock endless possibilities in the sense that there are 100 plus prepackaged adapters um, to create integrations to these systems, right? Um, and if there isn't an adapter for that particular system that you're trying to access, you can always use the technology adapters, you know, REST, so file, FTP, um, to talk to these systems uh, and either post or, you know, get information. Okay, so let's take a look at the integration that I'm going to call from my agent. Uh, this integration is accessing an on-prem database and getting a list of claims back. Um, the input parameter to this is the MPID uh, that is available within the Fusion environment. Uh, which will be passed in um, and based on that M EMP ID does a lookup and returns a list of claims in the JSON payload. Um, this is the endpoint URL um, and this is the response sample. Next, 
let's take a look at the Fusion AI Agent Studio. Um, I'm in my Fusion environment. Under my tools, I can see the AI Agent Studio option because I have the correct roles. Um, and when I click into it, it'll load to, to the AI Agent Studio homepage. Um, at the bottom, you'll see um, all the options or components of the Agent Studio. Um, the agent teams, agents and tools, and then, you know, some more options to configure um, the agents. So what we're interested in during this demo is the tools section. And um, I can show you I have already created a REST tool. Now I'm going to click on edit. Um, you know, when you create a new one, you'll see the drop down of the tool types of all the different tools that you have. I selected the external REST. Um, and then, you know, you give it a name, um, you know, family, the description of what the tool does. Um, and then here is bottom, you can configure um, the base URL of your um, integration. And that you can get from the integration tab. Uh, that's the first part of the URL, the host name. Uh, along with that, you can select the authentication. Um, OIC endpoints support basic and client credentials, OAuth. So in this case, I've configured OAuth and um, you, you'll have to give the client ID, secret, scope, and the token URL. Once you do that, it's all set. Then you can go to functions and in the functions, we then add the rest of the URL, right? So that's the remaining portion that you can get from here, uh, pasted here. and. Um, notice we won't be adding any uh, parameters here. Um, there's a separate section at the bottom where you can add a parameter. In this case, it's EMP ID with the data type string um, and then descriptions um, for both of the endpoint as well as the parameters. Uh, once you create that, it'll show up here and you can hit save um, and create the REST tool. Next, let's go to my agent teams. And I already have an agent team for the benefits advisor. And um, I'll open this, the one that I've created. And you'll see here um, in the agent teams, well, you can do it two ways. You can create an agent, add a tool to the agent, um, and then in the agent team, come and add the agent. Uh, but here, I just directly went into agent teams and created the agent here, right? So. Um, if you take a look at this agent that I have, um, it is a worker agent that I've added. I've given it a name. Um, and then the prompt here, right? This is what it actually takes in the AI agent to understand what it needs to do, what its responsibilities are, how to identify um, what tool to call based on what information um, and all those things, right? So here I have for claims, any sort of claim question, you know, call this tool to receive claim information. Um, and then at the start, I have given it a responsibility as well. Um, then the tools for my agent here are, you know, a lot of different tools. Um, the main ones being the get user session. So whoever is talking or interacting with this agent, it can get the user session. And this basically, if you look at the details, it just fetches the person number of the logged in user. Um, this comes in handy when you need to do more lookups, right, based on whoever's interacting. Um, in this case, then it's going to call the benefits enrollments and the public workers to get worker information um, as well as the benefits information. Um, the worker information is, you know, get the worker by the person number. So get user session, then get the worker. So this gives us, you know, things like address or things like enrollment IDs and all the, all the details of the person or the worker. Um, there's this document tool that has um, all the documents for our benefits. So if I ask a question uh, about my benefit, it'll do a lookup and it will then, you know, provide me an answer. Um, and then the one that we have here is the claims tool, which, you know, is the one that I just showed. Oh, this is just a reference to that tool. Um, so yeah, let's run it and see it in action. Um, just by typing hi, you will see it'll give me my person number, person ID, name, uh, email, and then some other details, right? And this happens because in the prompt, we've we tell the agent to 
um, you know, get all the details whenever someone starts chatting. Right? Um, and we can see the the string of calls it makes, right? First, it, you know, takes the high in, uses an LLM to understand what the question is or whatever the user inputted. Next, it calls the get user session. Um, and when I click this, it'll show me, um, you know, the user details and particularly we're getting the person number here. Uh, but basically it's internally just calling the business object to get the details of the user. Um, next, it sends that to the LLM that, you know, this is the prompt. This is what I got as a part of the tool response for get user session. Um, what do we do next, right? So then it, you know, has a series of calls and LLM uh, requests, which it uses to um, also create this structure from that JSON uh, and understand whatever we've typed there. Okay, next I asked view current enrollments and it called the business object to get a list of enrollments that I have and it you know, display it in this sort of format, right? So up till this point where I asked to get the current enrollments, everything was internal to Fusion. There wasn't any API calls outside of the environment. Um, but then I asked, you know, get me a list of claims. And in my prompt, I've told it that when someone asks this question, you have to call uh, the claims REST API. And that's why you see this is being called. And we can go into more details right here. You'll see the endpoint URL if the detail is being called. Um, and then, you know, the JSON payload was there and then it, you know, ingests it and then displays it in sort of a, uh, a more human readable format, right? And this is being pulled from the OIC instance. So now if I go back to my OIC instance um, and if I refresh my logs, I'll see that this was just received. Um, so yeah, that's an example of how you can make um, a REST tool using an Oracle integration uh, to connect to private sources where, um, you know, this uh, tool cannot directly talk to, right? Um, so yeah, that was just a sample to show you how you can use Oracle integration as the middleware to broker communication between uh, an AI agent and some sort of private resource, right? Uh, with Oracle integration, you unlock endless possibilities. You can, you know, connect to databases, you know, queues, topics, file servers, any sort of file-based um, integrations as well. Um, and then if there are, you know, systems where there aren't APIs, where right, you can use the RPA tool to connect, um, pull information, push information, all sorts of things. Um, you can kick off, uh, you know, approval flows, human interaction flows, assign tasks, using the process automation and then also the decision service to um, you know, use complex decision trees and decision tables within your AI agent flows. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, hope this was helpful.